Hey folks, Dr. Lava here. By the time of this video's creation, there's not a single Metroid or Castlevania game available on the Switch. But there are a few fantastic Switch games with their feet firmly planted in the Metroidvania genre, so let's have a look at the best three. First up, and the best of the bunch in my opinion, is Team Cherry's Hollow Knight. It really doesn't get much better than this. The game itself is beautiful, a hand-drawn masterpiece that aesthetically and tonally reminds me of Spirited Away, but gameplay-wise it's unmistakably Metroidvania. Hollow Knight isn't just a retread of ideas and mechanics already well established in the genre with a fresh coat of paint, it brings a lot of its own ideas to the party as well. For instance, scattered throughout the game's vast world are about 40 charms, of which you can only equip a limited number at one time, and they can grant abilities like a longer reach for your sword, double healing power for your focus ability, and enemies dropping more money when they're killed. Not only does Hollow Knight do a lot of things that are new and unique, it borrows ideas from some great games of the past. Similar to collecting Skulltolas and Ocarina of Time, in Hollow Knight there are about 50 hidden grubs, which you can trade in for money and upgrades like the game's equivalent of heart pieces. Each area has a cartographer you'll need to find to unlock the accompanying map, much like Tingle in Majora's Mask. Every enemy you kill drops money, which you can spend at various stores for upgrades. If there's one thing that bugs me in some games, it's having more money than I can spend, but that's not the case in Hollow Knight, as there's lots to buy and you'll be pinching your pennies until the very end in order to unlock some of the best items. And Hollow Knight's world is gigantic. It took me nearly 50 hours to reach 101% completion, and I know I'm still missing at least a half dozen upgrades hiding somewhere deep inside the game's caverns. Because Hollow Knight has been updated several times with free DLC, the completion ratio can reach well over 100%, and the Switch release of the game comes with all DLC updates, past, present, and future, right out of the box. Hollow Knight has an absolutely massive world with over 100 hidden upgrades, dozens of bosses, in-game achievements, a super difficulty setting, and so much more that I don't even have time to touch on here in this brief overview. The game is a 10 out of 10 in my book and only costs $15, so do yourself a favor and pick it up. Next up is SteamWorld Dig 2. The first game was a hit and should be ported to the Switch immediately, but the sequel improves on just about everything the first game already did spectacularly. SteamWorld Dig 2 has both its feet firmly in the Metroid genre, but visually is reminiscent of steampunk and specifically the Wild West subgenre. What makes SteamWorld different to your ordinary Metroidvania is that you can carve a path out of the world yourself, meaning your mind could look very different on your second playthrough compared to your first, and as you can imagine, that adds a certain amount of replayability. You play as a steam-powered robot digging your way through the game's mines, collecting gems that can be exchanged on the surface for cash, which you'll exchange for upgrades. Your lantern only has so much fuel, and health refills are scant underground, so you'll be escaping upwards to the town every 10 minutes or so. If you die in the mines, you'll drop all the gems you've collected since your last visit to the surface, so the pressure is always on to make sure you've got a quick and safe escape path upwards when things start to get dicey. You don't want to find yourself low on health and out of lantern light without a safe way out. But once you do manage to escape, you'll be richly rewarded, cashing in what you found for any of the game's 100 plus upgrades, and you'll be eager to get back into the mine to collect more gems when you see you're just a few dollars shy of an upgrade you've had your eye on. It's a very satisfying gameplay loop, and when it's getting late in the night, you'll be telling yourself again and again, just one more trip into the mine, and then I'll go to bed. Like any good Metroidvania, upgrades aren't only in the stores, you'll be finding lots of collectibles underground as well, and there's a leveling up system, which always makes things more fun. Exploring isn't just limited to the mines in the town, there are also deserts, temples, and more environments that I won't spoil for you. SteamWorld has a great soundtrack and an eye-pleasing aesthetic, and you'll be enjoying your journey into the depths for about 20 hours, or half that if you speed through to the end, making no effort to root out its many hidden collectibles. There's also some post-game content even after you've reached 100% completion, so you're getting a very respectable amount of content for the price, which is $20 at the time this video went up. My only complaint is that there's only one difficulty setting. Not that the game is too easy, but I would have appreciated a hard mode to really test my skills on a second or third playthrough. Nonetheless, I give the game a 9 out of 10, and if you're a fan of Metroidvanias, this is a must-have experience. Okay, third on our list is Axiom Verge. Visually and stylistically, the game feels more like a Sega Genesis game than a modern-day offering on Switch, but I guess that's kind of the point. As far as story and setting, it borrows more from Half-Life, with lead character Trace, a scientist trapped in an environment that's science gone wrong, has turned into a hellish nightmare. 
One thing I'll say about Axiom Verge is, while I did enjoy my time with the game, it felt more like a by-the-numbers Metroid homage. If you're looking for something that fills that Metroid archetype without straying too far, you can't go wrong with Axiom Verge. It doesn't break the mold and do its own thing as much as Hollow Knight and SteamWorld, but you could say it's more of a pure Metroid experience than those other two games, as well as offering a steeper challenge. So if that's what you're after, this is the game for you. Don't get me wrong, just because Axiom Verge is by the book Super Metroid doesn't mean it isn't good. It is good, and has plenty of cool and unique weapons and abilities like the Drill and the Disruptor, which can turn enemies into platforms or just confuse their AI. This little drone comes with its own health bar and can be used to scout a forward area without risking your own neck or just soften up larger enemies nearby. The game has everything you'd expect in the genre, from bosses, to backtracking, to hidden upgrades, and while I don't find its visuals as appealing as the first two games on this list, its soundtrack is certainly out of the norm and gives the game a style all its own. Axiom Verge does offer both normal and hard difficulties, something I think belongs in every Metroidvania, so that's certainly appreciated. And the game's length is a respectable 10 to 20 hours, depending on your desire to reach 100% completion. I give the game an 8 out of 10, and as the most uncut, Metroid-y Metroidvania game on the Switch today, it belongs on this list. And those are the three best Metroidvania games on the Switch. Alright, tune back in next time. Thanks for watching.